and welcome to another episode of the podcast, the POD cast, as we call it, pride Detroit.com. We are in the middle of our Movember campaign where we are raising money for two amazing charities. We just ended the first half where we raised seven over seven thousand dollars for the Prostate Cancer Foundation. Now we're moving on to Rain, which supports sexual assault survivors. By the way, my name is Jeremy Reisman. I'm the host of the Pride of Detroit podcast and the managing editor or the editor in chief over at Pride Detroit.com. As part of these awesome campaigns that we're doing to raise money where we get to interview a Lions player every Tuesday and this one is no exception with us this week is Lions fullback Jason Cabinda Jason how you doing buddy I'm doing great man thanks for having me on man I appreciate it well I appreciate uh, you joining us and uh, as as you know um, for November we're we're sporting our mustaches uh, growing some facial hair you've got some facial hair of your own um, you've been sporting kind of the goatee for uh, a pretty long time as, as I understand is that right yeah, I got the got definitely got the goatee going here, a little uh, soul patch action. Yeah, <laughs> where where did that begin? Was, was that just something you, you tried out? Was there someone that you 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 modeled after, or just it, it grew in that way, or what? <laughs> um, I probably started growing it sometime in college, maybe sophomore, junior year. I was probably a little fearful that it wouldn't connect, but yeah, luckily I ended up getting my dad's jeans, and it did, and the soul patch came in too. So. <laughs> I, I am not so lucky for uh, there's just a little part that usually misses. But have you ever tried any, anything else? Just like solo mustache, go for like a big beard like Austin Bryant. I haven't, but I, I might. Yeah, honestly, my my face a lot. Honestly, if I did. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, you know, we're running this charity all month, but you're you're kind of known for for being a, a pretty charitable person around around the Detroit area. You know, you've been here just over two years, and I seem to see your face pop up every time the lines are doing something charitable. So. Um, why is that important for you to do? And, and do you have maybe a specific memory of, of something you've done that, that really meant something to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think for me, I, I know it's really important to just, you know, give time. I think we really take for granted, you know, in our positions, being a Lions player, being an NFL player, you know, just how far along, especially the kids, you know, people of need, you know, just how much it means to them when you just give your time, you know, and 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 go spend time or, or do some type of activity. I, I think, you know, something I did recently that that meant a lot to me was, you know, I did a book drive over at, at Davis Elementary School, Elementary Middle School, you know, downtown. I, I, and that meant a lot to me. I mean, the kids were super excited. I mean, we I donated a, a ton of books, you know, so each grade, you know, um, got, you know, their book for their grade level. And then we ended up donating a ton of books to their library as well. And, and you know, that's a school that is definitely in need, you know, has a lack of resources and stuff like that. So any type of support, you know, I could give to them was awesome. So it was a really great event. It was a great turnout. The kids loved it. You know, I, I invited a few of my teammates to come help me out. And, you know, they were so excited. And they're asking us like, are you guys real Lions players? You guys are real NFL players? But they were, they were super excited, so it was it was very heartwarming. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that moment meant meant a lot to them. Um, I want to move a little bit to the to the football side because, um, you know, I, I think there was a comment from from Coach Campbell that that went a little overlooked uh, uh, for some people because he, you know, his philosophy seems to be, you know, at the beginning of a of a new regime like this, it's first probably on the coaches to to be leaders just to kind of show what they want. But one of the things he continues to talk about is how that eventually has to become the player's job is how they're going to have to motivate everyone in that locker room themselves. And he mentioned you specifically as one of those guys that he kind of leans upon for that leadership. And I'm just kind of wondering, is that something that comes natural to you? I know you, you were captain over at Penn state as well. Um, is that just something that, that kind of you naturally assume or, or how, how does that come about? Yeah. I mean, uh, I would say I, I definitely have somewhat of a, a alpha personality and I, I think that helps. Um, but you know, I've always been the type to lead by example, you know, everywhere I've been, I, I've always, come into a room or come to a locker room and I've looked at, okay, who, who's the hardest worker in this room? You know, let me try to outwork that guy. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, doing that has always helped me to, you know, kind of be shown a, as a guy who works really hard, a guy who does his job, a guy, you know, who's a, a professional, you know, and, and goes about his business the right way. So I think that's really just my approach. You know, I'm a vocal guy. I have no problems, you know, being vocal when I know something isn't up to standard, you know, I'm not afraid to say something. And, you know, coach Campbell is aware of that and, and knows that. And, you know, we're just trying to bring everybody along, trying to make sure we're all rowing the boat in the same direction. So, you know, all that's really important. When you walk into that locker room, who is the guy who works the hardest, you think? <laughs> I'm sorry? When you walk into that locker room, who who is the guy that you have to outwork? Who's, like, the one guy you're like, that dude is working his butt off. I, I, I got to do more than him. Oh, uh, no, nah, I mean, there, there, there's a lot of guys. I mean, when, when I first got here, I mean, Miles Killebrew was one of those guys. But I think 
you know, right now, Brock, you know, our D-Lime and Brock, he, he, he's definitely a hard worker. You know, I'm always seeing him in the gym, getting extra reps, you know, doing those kinds of things, getting extra. Um, so that, that's that's always good to see. I think, you know, right now, compared to the years past, we have a lot of guys staying after, continuing to work their craft, you know, continuing to try to get better. I think that's that's so important for our team. Do you get a chance to say uh, hi to, to, to Miles last week? I'm sorry? Did you get yeah, a chance I did. to say hi to Miles last week? Oh, yeah. I, I seen him after the game. I, I was actually blocking him all game, so he oh. he, he saw he saw me pretty early. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, and let's let's transition to the special teams there because uh, that's obviously a huge part of your game. And one of the things that <coughs> Dave Phipps said that I found was pretty interesting was, you know, special teams kind of takes both that offensive and defensive mentality to really be successful at it. You're one of those guys that plays on all four units of the special team. So do, does it kind of? perfectly fit you as a guy who transitioned from the defensive side of the ball to the offensive side of the ball you can kind of do everything yeah no doubt I mean special teams man it, it takes a lot of heart takes a lot of guts you know um high energy high effort plays um you know normally the guys who are you know always down to do the dirty work you know and, and, and get in the trenches you know those are the kind of guys that you want on your special teams guys who play full speed no gas no brakes that's kind of our mantra um so that that's something I've de definitely taken into account and and try to embody in my, in my game when it comes to special teams. You know, when you're watching, for example, if you're playing kickoff return, you're watching kickoff film, what you don't want to see is that guy who's just running as fast as he possibly can and, and doesn't freaking stop all the way through. That's the kind of guy I want to be, um, you know, somebody who's feared in that sense, somebody who, who pops up on film like, man, I, that is not who I want to block, you know. So that, that's definitely the mentality a lot of us try to take. Is that, is that a tough mentality to get into? Because, you know, if you're playing offense, if you're playing defense, you can kind of like – work your way into it and build a rhythm. But when you're special teams, it's one play and then you're, you might be on the bench for eight minutes. Right. Nah, no doubt. You got to go. I mean, special team. And, and that's the, that's the dope thing about special teams is like, you know, it, it takes all 11. All it takes is one person to mess up and it could be a big play. I could, I could have a huge, you know, impact in the game. I mean, obviously we had a couple of uh, great returns in this past game that, that really helped us. So we're just trying to continue to have a positive impact in the game and kind of be game changers on special teams. Yeah, and it, it kind of feels like you're you're just maybe a, an inch away from breaking that big one. Is that is that kind of the mentality you guys feel right now as well? Oh yeah, no doubt. I mean, we know there's a lot of meat still on the bone. Um, you know, even Khalif's you know 50 yard return. You know that that one should have been a touchdown. So you know we're always in the mentality of trying to get better. What more can we do if we could just strain half a second longer? You know, a lot of the times that that ends up being the difference. So did did he get tackled on the punter by the punter on that one? Um, I. I <laughs> Did you know he kind of he kind of got forced yeah. into the punt? <laughs> Are you guys kind of maybe rib him a little bit for that? Oh uh, no, nah, he, he was in a tight angle, man. We 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 know how Leaf is as a return, and we know nine times out of ten he's gonna make that guy miss. Um, I, I want to go back to the transition from from linebacker to to running or fullback. Um, I, I know we we talked to you in the off season or in training camp, and and you talked about you know watching guys like Kyle Juice check and things like that, but. I'm just kind of curious as now that you've had a full off season to, to prepare for that. Do you, do you kind of identify as a fullback now or is, is there still kind of a part of you? It's like, I still, still kind of feel like that, that linebacker. Um, I mean, it's kind of hard to say. I mean, I've been moved around a lot this year. I've pl I mean, in the offense I've played, I've lined up at fullback this year. I've lined up at tight end. I mean, I'm at that age. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of just in this kind of super back role right now. I don't really know. <laughs> call it a uh, Swiss army knife, you could say, but um, I mean, I, I'm just trying to do everything I can, you know, everything that is asked of me and, and, and just continue to grow in my role. Um, you know, these guys, you know, they know I, there's a lot that I can do and, and they're trying to continually to find ways to make sure I can have an impact on the field. So, you know, I've been very open, um, you know, when it comes to the coaching and when it comes to being coached, knowing that I'm being put in, in new positions I, I've never been in before, you know, while playing the game. So, I just think, you know, this is a great time for me to grow, a great time for me to just be a sponge, continue to learn from Coach Campbell and, you know, all the little pointers that him, you know, my position coach, Coach Johnson, you know, Tanner, those guys um, have for me. But uh, to me, it's just about having a growth mindset, you know, being open to whatever um, and, and being willing to do whatever because, you know, that's the kind of guy I am, you know, whatever it takes to win, you know, that, that's that's where I'm at and that's what I'm willing to do. So so, so you mentioned Ben Johnson, you're, you're – does that mean you're you're mostly kind of working with the tight ends a lot in practice or, or how much are you, yeah. are you interacting with Deuce as well? Yeah. So, you know, I started off the year, you know, working out with Deuce through training camp and, you know, through, through the first couple of weeks of uh, the season and, and now I've moved into Coach Johnson's room. So, you know, I'm, uh, I guess, 
from that standpoint, a tight end. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it just shows, you know, they feel like there, there's a lot of places I can grow, that there's more that I can do. So they're, they're just trying to continue to, to make me grow and continue to help me to develop as a player. How, how is that mentally? I mean, that feels like maybe a lot. Like you just, you just last year, you transitioned to the offensive side of the ball. Now you're transitioning kind of between fullback and, and tight end. Um, mentally, is that, is that something that's, that's challenging every day? Yeah, I mean, there, there's no doubt about it. Um, you know, Jamal's been down the past couple of weeks. You know, Jamar, you know, I had gotten injured during this last game. And, you know, Deuce is coming up to me like, hey, you, you need to be ready to take handoffs. So, like, going into every game, you know, I'm, I'm prepared to play fullback. I'm prepared to play H. I'm prepared to play tight end. Um, but they know I'm a smart guy. You know, I, I handle my business and I, I study and, and really, um, you know, ask questions and make sure I'm, I'm up to date with everything. But it, it's really just focus. Now, that's really all it is, you know, staying disciplined in, in the game plan and stuff like that and, and knowing my role, know what could come up for me. So just staying on top of my stuff. So that's, that's all. Not easy. Uh, I think yeah. when I first came to the end, it, it really made me realize just how involved the tight ends are in everything from a the run game standpoint, pass game standpoint, pass protection standpoint. Um, so uh, I never realized how mentally challenging the tight end position can be. But, you know, you really got to know everything from run game to the pass concepts to routes to, to all that. So. Well, you talk about, you know, being ready to take a carry. Well, you, you got one last week. Uh, you got a, and a big one. You, get, you got a fourth down uh, carry, picked up the first down two yards on it. Um, is there an art to a fourth and one? Because I guess from afar, sometimes it just looks like you're running into a pile and just kind of hoping you come out the other side. I mean, yeah. I mean, fourth and one, you know, one of those plays, that's just mentality. You know, it's just I got to get it. What? Um, so I, I think for me going into that play, it's like, hey, I'm going to put my head down or whatever's in front of me is going to get trucked and I'm going to get it. So that's that's really all it is. It's one of those mentality type of plays. Do you do you know in the moment that you picked it up or not? Because I have to imagine that there's not. A t I mean, when there's bodies surrounding you <laughs> in every direction, it might be hard to see where you came out. I did. I mean, the, the O line got a real good push up front. So you know, by the time I really hit the line of scrimmage, really hit where they were, um, you know, I, I had a, I had a pretty good idea that I had gotten it. Um. So the, obviously, the game ends in a tie. That's. If I'm not mistaken, your your second tie with the lines, you, you were part of the practice squad when they when they tied in 2019. Um, there, uh, so I'm assuming you were one of the players that knew uh, a tie was possible in that game because it seems like every now and then someone someone doesn't know. Yeah, no, that's true. I know there are definitely a couple of guys on that sideline. Like, hey, is there double overtime? Is there triple overtime? No, nope. it. Whatever happens, what happens. What, what I'm always curious because a lot of times when we get like locker room videos, um, you know, it, it's after a win and you, you'd never see anything after a loss and you certainly don't really see anything after a tie. So what, what's the emotion like in that locker room after that game when, you know, it's a tough physical game, it's, it's in the weather, you, you guys, you know, take it to a, a really good team, but, but in the end it's, it's not a win, it's not a loss. Yeah, no, that, that's a great question. I think a lot of us came back into the locker room really not knowing how to feel, yeah. uh, you know, obviously it's not a loss, but it's not a win either. Um, but but I'll tell you what, you know, knowing that we had dropped the last eight games, you know, it it, it felt good at least knowing it wasn't a loss. Right. Um, but, you know, there's room to improve. I think we were in position to win that game and really should have. Um, and we know the things that we need to clean up on film. And we're just looking to get better this week. Uh, last, last question I got for you, and, and it's an, a, involving last game as well. I mean, you guys rack up 229 rushing yards. As, as a guy who's now pretty instrumental in, in that running game, whether you're playing tight end or fullback or whatever it is, how good does that feel? How, and how much of a building block does that feel to, to know that you can maybe assume that identity of that physical team that can they can punch a team in the mouth over and over and over again to, you know, 40 rushes in that game or so? Oh, no, I mean, that, that's that's huge for us. I mean, we all know, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers brand, you know, they always play bully ball, you know, run the ball, stop the run. You know, that's always been their mantra. So to come in there and be able at their house to be able to, you know, rush for 230 yards is huge. And and honestly, to, to watch the film and see that we, you know, we left some meat on the bone and it that two, 230 easily could have been 300, you know, if if everything had went right. Um, so it's, it's good to see, you know, it's good to see how physical we're playing right now. You know, we're on our keys, you know, we're, we're blocking right. We're playing with good techniques. So we just got, you, you know, we just got to keep building on it. You know, it's good. It's a good thing to be able to build on and, and to be able to look at the film, you know, correct the mistakes and hopefully, you know, have that same result next week and, and continue to carry that on forward. 
Well, uh, that's Jason Kabinda. I'm, I'm going to start calling you the super back now. I, I like that a lot. Um, thanks for joining <laughs> us. Uh, really appreciate you helping us out for our, our Movember campaign. Good luck to the rest of the season. Um, I, I hope uh, we get that, that first win pretty soon there. And uh, and I, I hope we continue to see you your, your role gl- gl- grow because you're all over the field at this point. <laughs> no doubt, man. I appreciate you having me on, brother. All right, thanks for listening, everybody. We'll be back on uh, later this week to preview the upcoming game against the Browns. But until then, thanks for listening. It's chaos. Be kind.